Hey, I'm sitting here in my warm greenhouse and uh, in this video I want to talk about how I've conquered broccoli over many years, actually since I started gardening. I can vaguely remember the first time I grew broccoli. It was in a previous garden over a decade ago, and back then in my first couple of years as a grower, I would have been growing plants from starts that I purchased from a garden center. Although I don't remember the details, I do recall growing nice sized plants, but this also was my first experience with aphids. Aphids destroyed my plants that first year, and I wasn't prepared to do anything about it. Keep in mind, this would have also been my first year gardening period, my uh, at least gardening on my own or doing my own garden in my own home backyard. And uh, when you have a site that you haven't gardened on before that you do for the first time, some things can go well, some things don't go well. One of the things that wasn't going well for me is I didn't have any natural predators for pests. I didn't know it at the time, but I believe today that that was definitely the case and that that made it harder when I first got started. The uh, second year that I was gardening and growing broccoli, I was still using starts from a garden center and I was still getting aphids. However, I was ready for them that time and I was battling them diligently, spraying those buggers off the leaves with a hose. And as a result, I did have some uh, broccoli heads that I could harvest, but I still was losing a fair amount of my plants. Well, by the third year, I changed to starting my veg veggies from seeds under lights in the garage and transplanting them out. Now, tomatoes were my gateway to that fun, and that's what got me into starting things from seeds. But broccoli took a ride along with it once I got set up to do seed starting. That's when I learned about the scourge of slugs in our area. Here in the Portland metro area, in Oregon, slugs are a big thing. We usually and historically are a wetter climate, although this last summer may call that into question, but generally we are and we usually have a lot of slugs, very similar to what I see for gardeners in the UK. My starts, particularly my broccoli, were getting mowed down shortly after being put in the beds, and I eventually did find sluggo as a way to minimize slugs and get my plants to mature. Lo and behold, at that point when I had mature plants, my aphid issues magically were gone. Now, I've ascribed that to the garden bringing in more beneficial insects at that point because I literally could see ladybugs around the garden. In particular, they were pretty abundant, but I'm sure there were other kinds of, all kinds of biodiversity occurring there that I, I didn't see or I wasn't totally paying attention to. It also could have been the benefit of just raising my own plants from seed. It could be that aphids were just more common on getting transplant starts. I don't know because once I got on the seed bandwagon, I really love growing seeds to starts. And so for that reason alone, I do almost everything from seed now from that point forward. And it wasn't because I just didn't like the starts from the nurseries. It was just because I really enjoy growing plants from seed. In subsequent years, I started seeing holes high up in the leaves of the plants. And my first thought was, oh, here's the slugs again. But the holes kept coming, kept persisting, even though I now had regular control measures for slugs. I tell you, I was slow to catch on, thinking the slugs were just somehow outsmarting me. But then the numbers of this pest became so great that I could see the little green caterpillars. They weren't hiding from me. They couldn't. There were too many of them. I learned what that white butterfly hovering around the garden was really up to. And so in my garden today, I find that the cabbage moth comes out when it's warmer, and it's mostly a summertime pest for me. I control it by using a bacteria BT, and I found that by spraying strategically, like right when they start, will greatly reduce the issue, and I'm only spray two, three times a year at the most. In terms of varieties, I found there are sprouting types and crown types of broccoli. I prefer the sprouting types because I can take many cuttings from the plant, sometimes over 12 to 18 months. The crowning types give you that glorious, nice big head you see in pictures or in the supermarket. And I grow them mainly for the challenge and to remind myself that I can. But when it comes to eating and just pure production, yeah, I think I like the sprouting types better. In the last couple of years, I've grown three varieties of broccoli, Bell Star, Weltham 29, and Di Sicco, uh, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, or Di Kiko, Di Sicco, or Di Kiko, C-I-C-C-O. Bell Star is my ode to crowning broccoli. It's intended to develop a large central head with side shoots that will produce smaller heads, and I definitely like varieties that produce side shoots. 
The seed catalog state that it can reach six inches across, and I haven't attempted to measure mine, but I think I definitely have had some that size just by my guesstimation. Waltham 29 broccoli was developed all the way back in 1950 at the University of Massachusetts. It's designed for climates that have traditionally been like what we have here in Portland, cooler temperatures in the Pacific Northwest. They can grow about 20 inches tall and form blue, green to medium large heads along very longer than average stalks. And I really like having some stock with my broccoli, so this has been a good variety for me. De Sisso, De Sicco, however we want to say it, broccoli, this scratches my itch for sprouting type broccoli. It sprouts a main head, and then it'll have many smaller offshoot florets that mature at different rates. This broccoli goes all the way back to 1890 and is considered an Italian green sprouting heirloom. These seed catalogs will tell you that you can get a six to eight wheat harvest window, but I think I actually get longer keeping it around the whole season. Well, a couple of years ago, I ran into a new pest, something I hadn't seen before, whitefly. Frankly, I never figured out how to deal with it before it just went away. This year at the very end of the summer season, I'd say about late September, I started to see whitefly again. If you watch my videos, you've heard me quote Charles Dowding before, and I actually saw him on a video recently talk about how whitefly becomes prevalent for him when the conditions are too dry and when the leaves don't have much moisture on them. He wasn't saying it as a matter of fact or as if he had like deep knowledge about the insect. He was saying it more as a matter of observation and what he thought made a difference in his own garden. But sure enough, I thought about it and realized that I had kind of slowed down on the watering toward the end of September, and I hadn't gotten rain around here yet, and so it was pretty dry conditions out there when the white fly appeared. And so I started making sure I'd water a little more frequently, even though I know rain was supposed to be coming soon. And now we have rain, no more white fly. So while in the video I've been talking about conquering broccoli, the reality is I still face new challenges every season, and I've worked to overcome them. I've got better about handling some of the typical challenges like slugs and cabbage loppers, and I've kind of figured out how to work around those things. So yeah, the garden is definitely in part a broccoli garden, and I get a lot of broccoli out of this place. Well, I'm still not planting anything this week, and this week's harvest has started to slow down. Really, there's not even enough for a donation, but here's what I'm getting. I am getting some lettuce now, uh, enough to build a salad, some cabbage, some chard. I'm pulling tomatoes out that are semi-ripe so that they can ripen on the counter. And then I do get a few peppers still from the greenhouse. Well, this year I'm potting up some veggies into pots and putting them in the greenhouse and, you know, cold tolerant veggies like cabbage and kale and lettuce and things of that nature and, and seeing uh, what I can do, seeing how long I can grow them, how it works. Um, how tolerant of the cold they really are, all of that sort of thing. And one of the things that I'm finding right away is that this gives me an opportunity to do something I can't do in the normal gardening uh, season, you know, because I grow so many vegetables, it's not practical for me to go around checking every leaf of every vegetable. But now gardening in the fall, I'm growing such a small amount, it allows me to garden in the micro. It allows me to kind of be a micro gardener and really get into the nitty gritty and check all the leaves for pests and just really see them uh, in, in more detail than I normally would. And I think I'm gonna enjoy that.